Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our topics this week are inflation versus AI. Which of those two forces will dominate the tech market for the next year? Second, we're going to talk a little bit more about the opportunity and what expectations should be around August 8th in the robo-taxi announcement from Tesla. And last, we'll give some of our thoughts related to recent commentary from Jamie Dimon and Elon related to where we're at in the whole cycle of AI. So we'll take it to the top here. As of this recording, we are on the same day where a hot CPI number, it was an expected hot, but it was even hotter than hot. And specifically is that the core inflation number uh, is running at least the last six months, the average over the last six months at 3.9%. High since July of 2023, the trend is not the friend when it comes to inflation. We at Deepwater don't think a lot about inflation because we want to focus on paradigm shifts and competitive advantage within companies, but we are have to navigate within that environment. And so here we are, the NASDAQ down, call it just about 1% uh, on that news. And we have ch companies like AMD that are down 2.5%. And then NVIDIA, it's actually up. It's been down 10% uh, over the last few weeks, but it's up a percent plus today. And so, uh, you know, as you think about, this is the tug of war that I think is going on here is, do you believe that the stronger arm is inflation or the power of AI, at least over the next 12 months? I think that it, it might be a wash in this sense. I've, I've always felt that the mega cap tech companies are a mechanism for offense and defense. They're offense because they have these AI plays. They've got probably the best optionality aside from a few private companies uh, that we do try to invest in at Deepwater. Um, you know, I think the mega cap techs have that AI optionality. And then on the defensive side, they've got Fortress balance sheets. And so even if we get a recession, even if we have to get pushed into recession because inflation doesn't go down to the Fed's 2% goal, I think these companies are, are in a good spot. Does that mean the stock can just keep going up forever? Probably not. I think if the market pulls back broadly, those stocks may slow down too. But I say it's a wash just because like, I believe in the power of AI in a longer time period. But when you talk about six, 12 months, it, it might be one where it's just this tug of war and we, we kind of end up maybe nowhere. Mm -hmm. The rate expectations are probably sitting right around a couple cuts still after this hotter number. A couple cuts this year that's down from, I think originally it was five. Uh, eventually, yeah. we'll probably get to no cuts this year. And my sense is that no cuts is going to be kind of the 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 headwind, not the death of the market, but the headwind of the market. But he's uh, death by uh, a couple cuts here that just over week to week to week, people are just getting more on board that we're probably not going to see rate cuts this year. That probably does create a headwind. Agree with you on that. But I'm more optimistic, at least in the next six to 12 months. I think that uh, what we are going to continue to see, the pace of that curve, the innovation curve, is exceeding what our optimistic expectations were a year ago in terms of how we're seeing AI being deployed. And I think that we'll see it in the numbers, not that it's going to be any big lift off in numbers, whether it's big tech or smaller companies, but enough to reinsure investors that this isn't a head fake, that AI is not a head fake. And I put those two still, those two forces, I'm going to take AI with a slight upper hand here and say that we're going to continue to be forming a three to five year bull market that's going to be driven by AI. I hope you're right, number one, because that's, that's how we are positioning ourselves thinking beyond the short term, because I, I agree with you 100%. If you think about the three-year picture, you think about the four-year picture, I still believe that we will have a continued AI bull market we're just now still in the heart of the infrastructure build-out phase. We've got reports that Microsoft is going to spend $100 billion to build a supercomputer potentially. So we're still building. It's a big number. You know, it's a huge number. And so I think that we're still in that build phase. To your point about seeing it hit in some of the numbers for these application companies, obviously we haven't seen revenue inflections from some of the companies that offer software instead of hardware. I think we will get that, probably not this year. I will caveat that. I think it's probably more like next year we maybe start to see some of those numbers really get impacted by AI. 
I think this is still kind of a slow build year from an application standpoint. But I mean, we're believers in the power of the technology. We use mm -hmm. it for uh, doing projects like Intelligent Alpha that we talked about before, where we're using it to pick stocks and it's very capable at that. I think it's going to be capable of a lot of things that humans do in the future mm -hmm. too. By the way, Intelligent Alpha is such a juicy topic. I think we have to do an entire deep tech episode. We'll break it down into three pieces, but talk about Intelligent Alpha. Uh, keep that on our, our radar. Uh, so I, I just want to uh, make it clear for our listeners, two things. Number one, this is not investment advice. This is just Doug and I thinking. And second is uh, my view that I think the market still goes higher, even though interest rates will remain higher for longer. And I uh, want to get your, can you cap, cap, kind of encapsulate your view? I said that they probably offset each other. I think that we probably are sort of range bound, let's say, for the next six-ish months is, would be my guess. Love it. Uh, second topic is a sequel to a topic that we discussed last week, which is Elon and the robo-taxi. When we recorded the last episode, we felt like this was going to come. There was going to be some sort of announcement about an event. And in fact, it did come after we had recorded the episode. And the case, uh, of course, is August 8th. We're going to see uh, whatever they're going to say about RoboTaxi. I do think it's appropriate, uh, before we talk about that event, to go back five years, almost to the day, to Tesla's, uh, I think they call it the AI Day or Autonomy Day, uh, back in, in 2019. April 2019, uh, that's when they showed off a lot of the bells and whistles. They talked about the robo taxi. They showed uh, like a, a mock up of what it would look like on on an app, and then they uh, and Elon proceeded to talk about having a million robo taxis on the road by the end of 2019. Uh, uh, by maybe it was within a year or a year. Ahead. <laughs> Either way, uh, the stock did nothing. When that happened, because investors, it went in one year appropriately and out the other. Who Since says then, markets aren't efficient, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Since then, uh, Elon continues to reiterate uh, that it's we're one year away from full autonomy. And since then, we've got 12.3.3, which is, in my view, a measurable update. I'm taking a lot from what I've read about it and what I've heard from our own Andrew Murphy, who has used the product uh, I, I heard today that there was a Uber driver who did 45 minutes in San Francisco using it, uh, just videoed the whole 45 minutes, two or three rides, and had no interventions. So uh, this piece, it feels like there's definitely more meat than five years ago. But going into, as we start thinking more about what's probably going to be a tough quarter when they report on the 23rd Tesla and the negative about what's going on with EVs and then the positive about the autonomy event um i'm i'm pretty bold up understanding that uh there's a long way to go here but this i think has the potential or not i think this does have the potential to i think change the investment view on tesla i think it has the potential i think the timing is still going to be the big question for me though and that's always my role as the, the rational optimist I think if they are able to deliver on the promise of RoboTaxi, the long, the long debated promise, um, it is potentially meaningful. I mean, you look at Uber, Uber is a more than $100 billion company. You look at uh, DoorDash, another 50 plus billion dollar company. Um, there's a lot of value in creating things that can transport humans and, and goods. Uh, so certainly that, that exists, that potential exists. Like we've talked about before, though, I think the question is really how quickly can you bring it to market, not just from a product standpoint and a technology standpoint, but from a regulatory standpoint, that might be the biggest bottleneck. And, you know, I think that that timing probably will matter in terms of when you actually see the impact on numbers and then to the stock. Um, you, I just want to uh, recap. That was a great point about bringing up Uber's market cap. Uh, did you say it was $150 billion? Is that right? I said over 100. I didn't know it was 100 billion. Okay, yeah. 100, yeah. 154 billion. It's a real company. Uh, there's Tesla's market cap right now is right around 500 billion. So, I mean, this has a lever. Obviously, Uber is global. There's a, lot, there's a long way to get there. So, but you're, uh, I would agree with your essential point that this is a real market. And, and maybe from a kind of a fit and finish, what to expect. My sense is they're going to say they're going to have 
an app just like they talked about in 2019 and you can participate you can have your car participate or maybe this is opened up to third parties who buy them with a license some sort of a business license and you buy 10 20 30 cars or does actually tesla own the cars because if you do the math and we're going to be showcasing more of this math you get to a, you can get to a point where it is um could be pretty powerful to tesla to actually own the cars i think that is um important for a few dynamics because when you have this self-driving robo taxi <laughs> network that we've talked about one of the unanswered questions is who's ultimately responsible right if if there is an accident and there will be accidents robots sure. won't be won't be perfect just as humans are they'll be better than humans but they still won't be perfect um is that the responsibility of tesla if it were a person's car someone who owned a tesla and was renting their car out through the network would it be their responsibility so to the extent that obviously if tesla is owning and operating the vehicles i think it makes that part of the story clear and i do think that that part of the story does play into this broader regulatory question because i think i think the government is going to want to know ultimately where will responsibility mm -hmm. lie they might even want to have a say in terms of where that responsibility lies i think it also lines up having tesla having their own fleet lines up with what they've talked about optimus and about labor and kind of disrupting some of that and those opportunities too and so i'm uh i'm uh, keenly awaiting for August 8th. And uh, final topic here, mentioned that Elon and Jamie Dimon had some comments related to AI. We're just going to focus on one of those comments. I'm going to pull it up here to make sure I get it right, is that uh, Elon said this week on a podcast that this is related to, I think, artificial general intelligence, but I'll read you the quote and want to get your reaction to it. My guess is that we'll have AI that is smarter than any one human probably around the end of next year. Can you decode what that means? Well, this is one of my favorite debates about AI because what it means to be smarter than a human is highly subjective. Right. Does that a AGI or not? I don't know. Is smarter would, than a human I would, AGI? I would argue that's probably not AGI, but I think what AGI is is even debatable. <laughs> like we can get right. very philosophical about it. I think what Elon is basically saying, and this is how I think about it. Again, going back to what we talked about with Intelligent Alpha, I use these products with a lot of depth. And I think when you talk about is AI smarter than a human, it's it's a difficult question. It's even a flawed question to some degree because you're trying to equate it to human-like intelligence. Mm -hmm. versus capability. That's the distinction that I think is really important to make. Is AI learning and thinking about the world like a human right now? No. I don't know that it ever will do that. But in certain contexts, in certain use cases, even self-driving, take that as an example, is it as competent as a human? I think it probably is. Self-driving, I think we can make a good argument that it's probably better than a human if you look at accident rates for the technology versus human beings. Sure. So I think we're probably close to certainly use cases where AI is smarter than a human. And I think from a, a broader standpoint, and we're seeing it with LLMs because they are so dynamic, they can be used for so many different things and they can learn so many different things. Um, I think that we're probably getting to a place where, again, from a capability standpoint, not does it think like a human, from a capability standpoint, I think Elon might be right. Exciting, uh, exciting to think about that. Exciting to think about what comes after with super intelligence. And uh, appreciate everyone joining us for this last this episode. We'll see you next week. On behalf of Doug and Gene, bye for now.